This is Sean Sport in podcast form. Johnny Mac is Flemington bound as we speak, but a little earlier this morning we recorded this. Well, we're heading to Melbourne again, guys, because uh, the Melbourne Cup is just hours away as we speak. The boss of the Victorian Racing Club is Steve Rossich, who used to be my old boss at the Dockers. Good morning, Steve. Great to talk to the old crew, Macca. <laughs> yeah, good to have you on, Steve. It's interesting to hear from you guys, particularly on, on Cup Day. So uh, the crowd is streaming here in at Flemington. Uh, it's currently Perth weather. Hopefully that'll continue. We'll wait oh, for Steve, <laughs> I think you might be dreaming. Sean, yeah. as you know, uh, really feels the cold and he's he's off to the Cup today and his wife has packed him a summer linen suit. How do you think yes. that's going to go? He's a fine-looking young man. I'm sure he'll look absolutely strapping, but he is batting well above his average, so no doubt they're going to look far better. I can already yeah. see what's going to happen with Sean, right, because Sean never picks a winner, and if he does pick a winner, something goes wrong. Yes. So I can see, <laughs> Sean, you're going, to have a, you're going to have a winning ticket in your hand, and it's going to be a downfall. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, then and then a it's gust of get, wind. And it's going to get wet, and it's going to just dissolve in your hand. <laughs> I guess. I no, can see that happening. Wash yeah. your mouth out. It's going to be spectacular <laughs> weather here at Flemington. So, uh, are, the, are the roses out? Toast. Steve, the roses out? They are, Nat. It's hard to believe. 17,000 roses. Mm. And uh, they're looking super. And there's a little known fact. So Luke Ryan, fantastic uh, Fremantle player. His dad, Nick Ryan, is the head uh, keeper here of the roses. Is that uh, right? It it is. And so there's a strong Frio flavour here at Flemington. And Nick's done a super job to get those roses up and about, given that it hasn't exactly been... Yes. Spring weather I, in the lead in here. Yeah. Hey, is, it, is there someone on Rose Patrol to make sure people don't drunkenly flog the roses? <laughs> You're allowed to do that, actually. So, yes. uh, oh, there you go. So you, so you can claim a rose. It, Take Sean your second chairs, Put it on his lapel today. <laughs> oh, how interesting. Well, that, that is, uh, Steve. So you excited, mate. Over the last couple of years, obviously, we haven't had crowds because of COVID, and this is probably the first big year. Yeah. That people, and you know, everyone from over WA, I've been walking down the streets, heaps of people from the West um, over to uh, be a part of the whole Spring Carnival. It is, it's a great influx. It's hard to believe about a third of the attendees across the Carnival come across from outside of Victoria, uh, other states, overseas. So there's a real vibrancy about it. It is a major event. Um, It's my third year here at uh, the VRC. First Carnival across uh, the Melbourne Cup Carnival, no crowds last year. Restricted yeah. 35, so it was a tough start, but uh, super excited. <laughs> you, you joined at just the right time, up. didn't you, Steve? Just <laughs> nailed it. Oh, look, well, it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's been unprecedented. <laughs> yes. But it's, it's been so good that uh, racing has continued and interest in racing has, uh, has even increased. And the big days at Flemington are really sought after. Um, you know, there'll be a great crowd on track as it, today as it was on Derby Day on, on Saturday with over 71,000 around about that, or maybe even more today, depending on the weather, and uh, lots of interest around the country. One in two Australians will participate in the race today in some shape or form. It's, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. That's an amazing Yeah, and stat. you know what the worst thing is, Steve, is you would know this. Now that you're living in Victoria, you get the public holiday over um, in WA. We never got it, but most people take the day off anyway, don't they? Let's be fair. Well, it really is an unofficial public holiday in other states, isn't it, <laughs> yes. Sean? And uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a for sure uncertain one here. So uh, everyone's uh, super excited about that. And just looking around me now, and you can hear a bit of the background noise, just the crowd is streaming in. So uh, everything's looking picturesque. A bit worried that it might close in a little bit later, but hopefully it'll uh, at least wait until our feature race, yeah. the 160-second running of the Lexus Melbourne Cup at 3 p.m. is, is run and won. Steve, yeah. um, I, I know that you know, you're all about the racing, um, but do the, does the fashion play any importance to you? Do you... Uh, did you pick your suit? Did you have a discussion on what you're oh, going to wear? Mel would be all over this, surely. <laughs> well, she focuses on herself, Sean, and she's been doing a super job. <laughs> um, I'm actually, Nathan, in traditional wear today, the morning suit, which is oh. traditional for both Derby Day and Cup Day. Yes. So, I mean, it, it is easier for us gents, apart unless you go the linen number like Sean is, <laughs> um, to, uh, to go standard, but... The 60 years of Maya Fashions in the Field is being celebrated this year. It is uh, the largest festival fashion event in the world. Wow. And uh, more contests again today, and that'll unfold over the week. Um, And when you're on course, Sean, today, I know you're probably in the best seats of the house knowing you, but make (laughs) sure you get around. There's lots happening on course, lots of entertainment, 
out the back on the park, a bit of hot dud time machine if that's your go. Nice. Um, yeah. But but make sure around the mountain yard and, and tuned in for the pre cup because I got the chance to see a bit of a rehearsal yesterday and it was superb. Colin Hay from Men at Work fame does an amazing yep. job. And Cody Simpson, yeah. the swimmer athlete, can sing and he's singing yeah. the national anthem. And then wow. Shepherd uh, performing yeah. post cup. So there's lots yeah. going on yeah, apart from fun. Yeah. In uh, great races. Yeah, you've yeah. got it. You're mistaken, though. He's not singing the national anthem. He's swimming the national anthem. <laughs> 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 Sorry. But that's, uh, you know. That's it's got, it's a particular skill set. <laughs> hey, Steve, uh, one thing um, being in the AFL for so long as you were running Frio, I, I, I was thinking so Frio and AFL clubs pretty big, you know, 80 million to $100 million turnover a year. What kind of vicinity does money come through, you know, racing Victoria? It's, it seems like it's triple that, if not more? Uh, well, here at the Victoria Racing Club, we're very lucky. We have uh, Flemington, we have the Melbourne Cup Carnival, we control our own TV rights, um, and you'll see that uh, play out today on Network 10. So it's, it's a big business, um, and it reinvests back into racing in our club, so it's around about $225 million turnover, oh. and uh, an economic contribution from these four days um, in the state of Victoria is approaching half a billion dollars. And that's just so, from Megan McManus shopping. So that's quite amazing. <laughs> exactly. It's quite amazing. Exactly. <laughs> Someone was saying there's been six and a half thousand dresses sold in the last two weeks in Melbourne <laughs> in anticipation for these four days. Yeah, <laughs> and guaranteed four and a half thousand of them will be ruined by that's this That's right, afternoon. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they will never be worn again. Oh, well, Steve, it's going to be an absolute cracking day. I hope you, you really, really in, uh, enjoy it. As, uh, I will be going for, to my first ever Melbourne Cup, but plenty of West Australians getting over there and getting around it as well. They are, including uh, the West Coast Eagles uh, CEO, Trevor Nisbet's in town, so uh, I heard he was out and about, and Frio legends like yourself, Sean. So uh, <laughs> lots of West Australians on course. Always super to see. Good on you, Steve. Good on you, Steve. Thanks, we'll have a great Steve. day, mate. Hope everyone has a great day and tune in at the very least at Network 10 from 2pm for all the pre-cup action and then gates open in the great race at 3pm. A, 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 a bit earlier here in WA, Steve. Yeah. Well, I should say that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Three hours behind. Well, well done, that. How I'm, you've changed. How you've changed, Steve. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Good on you, Steve. Thanks. Enjoy Thanks, the day. Sean Sport in podcast form. That's the way it's going to be. Johnny Mac. Be we are from the horse this morning. We've had to know with David Short from Tab Touch. And <laughs> Shorty's got all the info about all the big bets, as usual, for Melbourne Cup. Looking forward to hear, hearing from him. Morning, Shorty. G'day, Sean. G'day, Nathan. How are you guys? Oh, my God. Can I just Shorty, say... we're just laughing at Sean being in the car on the phone on the way to the track. And listening to you two on the phone, I feel like I've got one of those crosswires where you pick up your phone and you're hearing someone else's conversation. <laughs> So I, I got. I got to tell. You, I got to tell you this though. Um, I had an Uber book seven thirty. Anyway, I was looking out the window. He was there, and I went out to the elevator at the place in Melbourne, and I jumped in, and the doors. It seemed like the elevator wasn't going anywhere. So I, uh, I worked out that you have to have a card to be able to get down to the bottom floor. So I ran to the fire escape, and it was going down the um, stairs, and then I couldn't get out of the fire escape. <laughs> Hey, Sean. I mean, that doesn't seem very fire safe to me. The year that Casey Donovan won the uh, won Australian Idol, right? I was over there for an, an uh, for a thing, and then um, they said that you needed to get ID because I had full on security at the um, Sydney Opera House. So I ran. Um, I, I caught the elevator up, and then the elevator had broken down. So they said you have to catch the stairs, uh, take the stairs down. But there was um, uh, the stairs wouldn't unlock from inside, so I was stuck there for two hours in the stairwell. Two hours. Oh. I wish that you missed Melbourne Cup that way. That would be so brilliant. <laughs> oh, God. Um, anyway, we've got Melbourne Shorty. Cup's upon us there, Shorty. What, what have you got for Indeed. us? What's going on? What do you like? Well, got, guys, one thing I will say, I hope our horses get a much clearer run than the pair of you have had over the last <laughs> little bit anyway. So uh, Uber's at a premium too, Sean, so uh, I hope he waited for you downstairs. No, no, Nick Dolph. We've got another one coming. <laughs> Hopefully it gets there soon. Uh, look, a great day of racing to look forward to. It's a really unique uh, Melbourne Cup. We've been used to having a truckload of international raiders yeah. come across for the Cup in recent times. That's not as uh, highly populated with overseas gallopers this time around. That said, the top couple in betting are from Europe. Uh, the favourites, the warm favourites, been really well back. The only runner in single figures. Uh, it comes with a lot of X Factor. We speak of Deauville legend. It's had the seven starts, three wins, three seconds. All the lead-up form's really good. 
and uh, plenty of punters happy to suggest that we can have our first favourite salute since way back in 2013. So a favourite winning, it's a little bit like that library book I forgot to take back in year three. <laughs> it's long overdue to arrive yes. today. Uh, hey, uh, hey now, Shorty, Shorty, are there any yeah. horses from, I don't know, somewhere like Alaska who would be used to the conditions that are going to be around today? <laughs> Uh, well, not quite Alaska. Uh, Hootie and Mel uh, sounds like a horse from Scotland. Uh, you'd think they'd be nice and hardy with these sort of conditions, and it goes around for Gay Waterhouse today. Uh, she's got a couple of cup runners. She was a classic. She had a, a press conference yesterday with a very crowded media gallery. Uh, she got towards the end, and she said, Are you all finished? I've got a hundred owners coming to my place. I've got to get home and tart myself up. So I've got to chop <laughs> off now. Uh, she's that. an absolute ripper, Gay Waterhouse. So that was great. Good luck to Gay today. My on top pick in the race is another of the European runners. Uh, I'm going with number six without a fight. This horse comes yep. in with excellent claims. It's got uh, great form, 17 starts, seven wins, seven placing. So uh, really consistent type. I thought at the double figure odds it was worth a little spec. The danger is Doville legend. Outside of those uh, at the bottom, horse number 24, Realm of Flowers, gets in with just 50 kilograms. Uh, it's been placed its last couple. It can play a part. And we love a WA angle. I'm going to throw one in at big odds. Number 11, Young Werther. Uh, star WA jockey Damien Lane takes the ride here. Uh, I think this horse can absolutely outrun its odds this afternoon. It's around $41. Uh, it's worth having a couple of bucks each way, I think, at the big odds, number 11, Young Werther. Um, uh, Shorty, is today's um, conditions, would they be the worst that the Cup has seen in recent years? It's hard to know. Um, uh, Shawnee Mac might be a better judge than us. So I've listened to a few previews this morning, and the really nasty stuff hasn't arrived yet, but uh, Melbourne can really turn it on quite yes. quickly. So it's a little bit of an unknown at this stage. The track's a soft five. I think most racing pundits were expecting the track to be uh, much worse in the heavy rain. So uh, at this stage, the track's looking okay around the soft. So you're not looking for the complete uh, snorkel and flipper job at this point, but it might change as the day goes on. We'll have to wait and see. Um, if it was to get really, really damp, there's a couple of horses that, that love it on the real slop. And um, one of those uh, is Stockman. He'd come right into it if the rain really came quite heavy. He's at a big price and could play a part. And high emotion is another that really likes the heavy ground. But uh, we'll wait and see. Sean, what's it looking like there at the moment? Yeah, it's overcast at the moment, Shorty, but I'm kind of with you. There's a couple of beeps going past. But um, a night sort is the other one that likes the wet conditions. They reckon it's going to rain around here around 1. So that's about 10 o'clock first time. So... Uh We'll, we'll have to wait and see if that eventuates. Yeah, the weather just, changes in a heartbeat I'm over just, here. Yeah, it does. I'm just on the bomb app for you there, Sean. And uh, um, at 3 p.m., which is, you know, when the cup jumps, it's yep, uh, yep. they're saying it's going to be 13 degrees. It's going to feel like it's nine. And they are saying rain at that stage, but not, you know, not overly heavy. Yep. And they do beca- prefer to be called the Bureau now, Natalie. No, they said they don't yeah, care they anymore. Do. They <laughs> changed their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Shorty, uh, what Nathan, we've got here, is there any people running with a whole heap of doubles that go in? Because like, a lot people like to have these free post bets. Um, is anyone running for some big money to win uh, the Melbourne Cup today? Yeah, look, look sir, we, uh, we've, it's a shocking result, uh, the fave with us, Doville Legend. It's been backed at much bigger prices on the way down. So uh, <laughs> it's been very, very popular and a lot of doubles on the way through. Uh, if you're looking for a couple of bets outside of the main race today, uh, Shawnee Mac, I think you can get a few drinks out of race eight, number ten, Munamek, around that five dollar yep. fifty range. Looks really well placed. And earlier in the day, uh, one of Paddy Payne's horses, race four, number twelve, Quang Try. Uh, they're the two horses outside of the Cup that I've had a bit of a flutter on. Big day out at Ascot today as well uh, in the Burgess Queen. One of the most talented horses we've seen in WA for a really long time, by the name of Amelia's Jewel goes around. She's a really hot, short, short price favourite, around a dollar sixty to take out the feature race, but that'll be the highlight out there at Ascot later on today where there'll be a massive crowd and I thought race seven, number six, no dice could be a good play. Uh, now, Nathan and Nat, I yep. love getting your cup day each year when I speak to you. Yes. Uh, who have you either drawn in the sweep that we can cheer for or who have you had a little flutter on for today? Haven't gotten into the sweep yet. So, yep. um, I will not um, insult the industry by betting on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I did. Young Werther stuck out for me because I thought it looked like um, it's about weather and then I thought sure. it should have been called um, Bad Werther. Um, but then, like, um, I straight away, I mean, it's 
only because I drive on it so much. Graham Promenade um, jumped out yeah, of it as well. Sure. Yeah. I don't think for, it's going to go for well. For the Dianella locals. For the Dianella locals, one, yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I love a smoky, um, somebody like Tralee Rose, cause, and only because I've been to Tralee and it's delightful. Yep. Um, so I'm all about that. Shawnee Mac, who's your money on? Well, I'm, I'm kind of thrown in the um, one at odds there, um, Young Werther with Nathan just pulled up there, yeah. but oh, I'm going to play that with a couple bat. of the favourites and, and um, the one that you had off number six straight off the bat as well there, Shorty, that, that'll Without be the go. Mum, mum for, for instance, she always backs Gay's horses, so she certainly with who you Mal and Night Thorder as uh, two, two horses in her quartet. Um, hey, um, Shorty, we might um, actually get your opinion on something. Sean's a bit worried because uh, I threw a spanner in the works. Sean, today, he's ensemble. He's not wearing socks. And I have been led to believe that some of the fancy areas like the birdcage of Sean is hoping to get in require socks. Can you confirm? I would have a pair of socks in my back pocket just in case, Nathan. Uh, on the Uber drive on the way in, Shawnee Mac. Just yep. wheel into one of those uh, fine establishments and see if you can't find a pair of socks. Nathan could well have just got you uh, your get out of jail free card by getting some socks. There'd be nothing, nothing worse than getting an invite to the, one of the big marquees and flashing with the hobnobs and being denied entry. <laughs> minus. What, what about Shorty? Would would um, Sean McManus Fremantle Dockers socks suffice? Because he's got a heap of those. Yeah, I would take, <laughs> no one wants uh, to buy them, so I've got plenty of them around. <laughs> At the very least, I'd have, uh, yeah, the old thick woolly ones there ready to go, Shawnee Mac. Don't miss out for no socks. Yep. yep. Oh, what about the fishnets Sean wears <laughs> under all of his clothes? Would they be okay? <laughs> I guess that's probably the last option, Nathan, but we'll take it if we have to. It counts as a sock. Where will you be watching the big race today, Shorty? Uh, I'll be at TAB headquarters in the radio studio there yep. screaming the place down for without a fight. Let's hope it can get the cash. All right. All right. Good, man. Thanks, Thanks for right. talking to us, Shorty. Good on you, mate. Cheers, guys. Have a great cup day. All right. Sean Sport in podcast form. Well, Australia back on the winning track when it comes to the T20 World Cup. Aaron Finch just leading Australia perfectly as he does as Australian captain, made 63. Pulled a bit of a hamstring, though, and it seems like every time I sledge him, Natalie, and you're a big fan of this, uh, he comes good. <laughs> well, you were saying if he doesn't score runs in this match, then he, he should be dropped, blah, 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 and uh, he did. So, <laughs> but now he might, yeah, with the injury, he may not be playing anyway. Yeah, Tim David's the other one who has a bit of a hamstring issue, but he seemed to have been able to field. Um, Aaron Finch was uh, uh, had to come off. Yeah. So he's looking unlikely for the next match. I think they're off to Adelaide to play. But at least Australia's still alive in this T20 World Cup because we're hosting and it'd be super embarrassing if we never got through to the next round. So so I'd we, be embarrassed. We really need oh. New Zealand to beat England, right? That's yep. going to help yep. a lot, and, and New Zealand are great. They're in yeah. awesome form. So that can very much happen. And, yep. and then all of Australia, uh, all of a sudden Australia back in it. Nate, yeah. how's this going? Are you interested in this? No, no. I was just sending an email. <laughs> 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 uh, literally. <laughs> an email. Um, anyway, what were we talking about? Cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, else? Australia's still alive. Well, we're going to move over to the basketball. I'm oh. really concerned. Aren't you concerned about the Wildcats Massively. now? That's four straight. They were woeful against well, Melbourne. Well, you know what? Wo- like, truly woeful. We had a good run there for a while, <laughs> didn't we? You know what? Every, 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 every peak has to have a valley. Yes. And we're, well, we're, we're in the valley and we can't the, the get up the hill. The valley's getting deeper. <laughs> we, can't, we can't see where we're the, the ladder is. the Grand Canyon they, of they, Valleys. They started well. Like, they started the season well, I should say. But they, they've fallen in a big hole now. And they're it's, not it's getting, unbelievable. They're not getting yeah. enough from Brady Manick. They're not getting no. Even Todd Blanchfield. Like, we used to rely on him to hit threes, you know, reliably. And he's not, he's not delivering that anymore. Yeah, it's he's got a really goal... Big golf in his performance. So when he's playing well, Nat, he runs yes. at forty one percent, hitting he three hot. pointers. And then when he's um, he he scores below ten points, he runs at twenty per- twenty percent. So yeah. two and ten, which is not good enough at no. NBL level. No way. And he does that regularly. Mm. Like um, uh, so they haven't got the outside shooting game. They haven't got the inside game, and it's left <laughs> to Bryce Cotton. And everyone just goes, oh well, if Bryce scores is twenty five, it doesn't matter. No, but you think because you, but, we're going to outscore them anyway collectively. No, but you need more than twenty five points to win a game, so you can't rely on the price. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They've got they yeah. have to have other scoring alternatives, basically. 
Yeah, I think yeah, uh, Norto needs don't. to be more aggressive. He needs to yeah. be more aggressive and take it to the hole. Oh, he's got as a cold lip, though. Yeah. He's worried that someone's going to flick his lips. And so. I did. I was watching the <laughs> That's game someone being you, no? on yeah. the weekend where he did take it to the hole. He got absolutely monstered when he did that, too, on this particular yeah, occasion. Yeah, like, there. Far out. Well, if you're going to get monstered he's at the hole, little. you wouldn't go back, would you? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nathan knows. <laughs> he knows. The, the interesting thing about this, and, you know, you can draw a few, uh, join the lines on the dots here, and... Um, Hutchie took over, Craig yep. Hutchinson took over, and SEN mob took over this club. And uh, since then, they are the first awful. time ever they did not make the finals. Well, first after, time in 35 years, yep. Yep, and, and they lost eight out of their last nine games. Mm. And so far this year, losing four in a row, including a couple at home, which we normally don't do. No. They're looking shaky. Can a change like that really um, affect performance, Sean, from your experience in the world of football? Yeah, it can, Nate. They always talk about the four pillars, and that would be so from a football perspective, it's the president, yep. the CEO, the, the memory manager. Phone. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, pillars. So, uh, and, and obviously the captain. Oh. There's now more. That, uh, so the Wildcats used to have Jack at the top. Yes. They've always had a really strong CEO, but that's kind of changed in recent times as well because yes. I think a few guys have left. There has been a bit of a clean out. Been walked yeah. out. Yep. Yeah, the new coach, coach. Yep. and then the captain, obviously, yeah. as well. well but well, Jesse's been around for a long time. Two in the last time. two years, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, being unstable uh, above, uh, as it really does um, affect what goes on and the performance of the team out there. So hopefully they can turn yep. it around. Bounce because back. Yeah, they'll be under a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from you mainly, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and also <laughs> me. <laughs> Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.